Let's see if a GovBird watches site will load. Okay, homepage with this very slick looking guy. Hey, I'm buying a watch. Uh, he's buying a watch, and this site is a page rank of five. Great, right? Okay, so a company like this might just want to rank well for a word like Gucci watch. Maybe, you know, they sell them. They might want to rank well for that term, considering it's typed in tens of thousands of times a month. Notice where the page rank goes, and look at the URL when it loads. You know what? I'm not going to wait for it to load. Uh, and it just moved. There we go. Now, Notice, they have one, just one what we call a parameter. It's a question mark and something equals something. Many of your sites probably have long strings of those. Their page rank from a page directly linked from their homepage again went from a five to a zero. Google has said, I assign no prominence to this page, and it all has to do with their architecture. They're in the middle of developing a site right now, and they chose to, or actually they just finished this site, and they chose not to bring us on for like five hours worth of work, and now they have no chance of ranking well for all the different brands as well as the different model numbers. And by now, I don't know how many of you are aware, but when people type in brand names and model numbers, they're ready to buy just that thing. So it doesn't make sense for you to rank well for the word Gucci, which you have on your homepage, but not Gucci Watch 05016X. Trust me, that guy wants that watch. So you better make sure that your site is architected and developed in a fashion that lets you easily rank well for those kinds of terms. Other things, um, important links in Flash and images, that kills us. You know, if you have a very important uh, text, but it's in a Flash or it's in an image, the search engines aren't going to read that. Now, I've always had somebody say, search engines read Flash. Yeah, they do. It's just like a big text file to them. There's no bolding, there's no this, there's no that. It, although they read it, it's not going to help you rank well if it does. If you have orphan or entry pages, they're also never going to rank well because they're not linked from your overall architecture. They're just sitting out there on the side. And that's okay, your landing pages are usually prime examples of pages that are sitting off on the side that aren't linked from your architecture. That's fine, because you're not trying to get them to rank well for anything. But the pages that you would like to get to rank well should be directly linked from your, your architecture. Redirected home pages. How many of you have heard of 301 versus 302? It's a simple rule. 301, that's it. There is no 301. There's a tool that I have in my tool set that will hit your site and tell you whether or not you have a 301 or a 302 redirect. Therefore, you run it, it's a free tool, it's in my bookmarks, which I'm giving out to anybody that gives me their card, and you have it. So then you'll know whether or not it's unfriendly, and then you just need to go back to your programming team and tell them, hey, you need to make that a 301. They should be able to do it. Yes, question? How do you clarify the difference between 301 Good question. And you know what, it's very technical, and I don't know, but I know that when my clients have redirects, and I run this tool, if it doesn't say 301, we can't even take their business on until they fix it. See, the thing is, for me, it's not knowing the intricate details of all this. It's knowing what's keeping me from achieving ridiculously high rankings for my clients. And if I know it's a 301 versus a 302, I'd have to bring my tech guy, Joe, up to explain it all, and you guys would all be asleep by then. But you should know that there's a tool that you can run on your site. If your site goes to your homepage, and then it has another thing, like it redirects the user to it, you should run this tool. If, you're, if your uh, redirect is JavaScript-based, remember what I said before. Search engines don't read JavaScript. So therefore, they don't see that redirect, okay? So these are the kind of things that, literally, I've seen people fix like that and change the entire landscape of how they go about ranking. Question? Good question. It's been that way since I started search. They haven't changed it yet. And search is not a very forward-looking business. I mean, yeah, you can get into the forward-looking, my clients don't want to know what might help them rank well 12 months from now. They want to know what's going to help them rank now. So for right now, if you have important things in JavaScript, it's only if they're important. You need JavaScript. We use JavaScript on everything that we do. But we make sure that the most important parts of the site are not dumped in the JavaScript because we know the search engines may not read them. There's a question there, too. Not as much. Not as much. And remember, there's no absolutes in search. One thing you all should realize 
As someone that's done this for eight years, there's no absolutes. Google will make a liar out of a lot of people in my position if they say, there's 200 pieces of the Google algorithm. Yeah, there are. What, did you talk to Sergey Brin and Larry Page? I know they don't return my phone calls, and I've been working with them for eight years. So there's no, like, there's no hard and fast rules here. And be very, very fearful of someone that comes along and tells you that, well, this is how it has to be. I mean, there are some things I'm giving you today that really legitimately are that, but there's always another way. You know, there's usually another way around some of these things. Um, if something doesn't sound right, doesn't sit well in your gut, listen to your gut. I uh, tell you, shopping carts and content managers kill search engine optimization people. And there's a reason why. The people don't know how to develop them so that we can do what we do. Um, two things. If your shopping cart has a bunch of question marks and equal signs, your shopping cart is now not search engine maximized. Search engines may find the page, but they're not assigning all the prominence they could if you rewrote those URLs to put in slashes instead of having all those question mark and equal signs. Another great thing about doing URL rewriting, you can start to put the keywords in your URLs. Even if your content manager or your, or your, e, or your e-commerce tool kicks them out of some crazy numbers, you can say whatever you see that number, rewrite it and instead call it suits. Or instead of going to the Gucci directory, which in your CMS might be slash number 20, now you say anywhere you see slash number 20, call it Gucci watches. Why? Because that's an important piece of how Google uh, goes about ranking websites. And there is a difference between search friendly and search optimized. Um, saying that the search engines can get to a page is very different than saying that page can be tweaked so it maximizes the visibility. That's a huge difference. I recently worked with a content management company and they said, oh, our, 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 our CMS is search friendly. And it was. The problem is that it automatically generated your title tags. So if you wanted to go in and change your title tag, which hands down is the most important thing you can change on your website, is the title tag. It's automatically developed by a, by a, by a tool that puts in the name of your company first. You're already ranked well for the name of your company. The name of your company should go at the end of your title tag if you have to have it there, because there's those kind of brand managers that are like, well, we have to have the name Mercedes somewhere. Well, then put it at the end, because you're gonna rank well for Mercedes without trying. If you're trying to rank well for the word luxury cars, you have to put that first. And if your CMS automatically generates your title tags, then that CMS has to be rewritten. So those are some of the things you may want to look for as you are working on or working with developers on sites.